Hello, Christian. Um, hello, everyone. Um, uh, welcome uh, to the lecture series Housing in Question. Uh, we are very glad to see all of you here uh, this evening. So um, just a small note about the lecture series. Uh, it's organized by um, High School of Economics, uh, Graduate School of Urbanism, with the support of uh, Zeka Briston, based in Berlin. Um, yeah, it's an organization which is uh, Call for the attraction of attention to the large housing estates and uh, the problems of peripheral housing and uh, periphery in planning. Uh, so in uh, in this uh, lecture series, we had two on the last two weeks. Uh, we had lectures more which which focused more on uh, planning issues and on politics um, from the planning perspective. And now uh, we today we will focus more on the neighborhoods itself and on the uh, issue of, of citizenship too. Uh, so please, uh, we're very welcome to have here uh, Dr. Christian Fölich uh, from High School of Economics. Um, and uh, just a, a small note on the uh, process. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot turn on the camera and as in, uh, for example, Zoom, uh, <laughs> Zoom call. But here on this platform, uh, you have an opportunity to ask any questions during the lecture um uh, in the uh, type box below on the right side please type them we will collect them and maybe uh christian answer some of them in the process maybe we'll collect everything and answer uh just after uh and please uh we have another option uh sometimes uh such lectures uh can be a bit <laughs> presenter and maybe uh, it will be it will be good if you can uh, like uh, push a fire but button on the left side from your <laughs> from your uh, box of messages uh, sometime it, it could help uh, so yeah <laughs> please enjoy the um, uh, the platform uh, so yeah and um, yeah I think it, that's it um, so please uh, Christian the floor is yours yeah, I will turn on Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the uh, for the invitation here to your lecture series. Um, I'm a sociologist. Uh, I'm a, a lecturer and a professor at the Department for Sociology at the Higher School of Economics. So um, I'm kind of a little bit strange to your discipline, right? Uh, although we are looking maybe at the same the same issues, and as um, it was already said before, you have been looking at uh, the housing issue from a political and planner's perspective. And today, um, from a sociological point of view, um, uh, we will look at uh, from, from a totally different, from the opposite uh, uh, direction uh, onto the housing issue, namely um, uh, from the perspective of, of people living and uh, yeah, in those houses themselves and being object yeah, of um, planning uh, processes and um, politics uh, and urban governance. And um, what I, yeah, I'm basing my, my thoughts here on today is um, uh, published in, in a couple of articles is uh, based on uh, previous research we did. Um, and uh, so we did it uh, from a comparative perspective. We looked at uh, in different um, countries, East European countries, but uh, today, uh, for the sake of, of time uh, and, uh, yeah, and, and also uh, uh, for the sake of having some uh, uh, time to discuss afterwards, I really hope you uh, we could engage in some questions you might have. Um, uh, I will limit myself uh, to um, examples from, uh, from Russia. Um, yeah. Uh, um, what was important for us? What what uh, what we were kind of looking at was uh, how come that uh, although uh, yeah big uh, political protests at least uh, big political protest cycles at the time when we were looking at it was a couple of years ago were absent and and after the uh, yeah the, the so called fair election for fair election protests you have might, might still remember them uh, uh, after the uh, presidential and, and and parliament elections in 2011 and 12 um, um, yeah protest was declining uh, on the on 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 the, on the more general political uh, 
uh, agenda. Uh, you, you could uh, at that time see also a lot of uh, small protests uh, confined to uh, very uh, particular uh, areas and cities, certain districts uh, or certain smaller regional uh, uh, towns. Um, and uh, those uh, protest issues were, were often related to uh, very particular uh, problems that people had in their uh, in perce perceived in their in their living uh, environment, the immediate uh, the public space around their their living environments, around their houses they were living. And uh, so this was um, um, what we were looking at, we were interested in, and uh, we, were, we were asking ourselves, yeah, how is this come, where is this coming from, and how is this, this developing, and how does this uh, protest engage with uh, general politics and urban government, governance yeah, in, in Russian cities? And uh, for today, we look at, um, in particular, uh, into some... Um, um, yeah, examples from, from from Moscow. That this might be also particular. So maybe some of you have um, uh, more experience uh, from Russian regions, from 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 Russian towns and cities uh, <laughs> far away from Moscow. So I would be happy to engage here afterwards and in, uh, in some some discussion. Um, but the general uh, uh, frame uh, for us uh, was to look at it uh, from a perspective of, uh, um, um, yeah, or for, from um, look at it in the frame of uh, general uh, uh, changes in, in urban governance, how uh, cities are governed, how cities are managed, and of course, people, yeah, people in the city, living in the city, make the city, and they live in, uh, as well in, in, in the city, and um, so that means that. Um, uh, these big uh, changes, yeah, the, the the end of the Soviet Union, uh, yeah, the um, the um, development of of, of uh, the, the installment of a new political system and economic system and so on in Russia, uh, of course, uh, caused not just political and social uh, uh, changes, but also a, a, a big spatial transformation. Yeah, cities uh, and towns and where people were living in uh, the areas, districts were changing as well. And uh, the whole approach towards what is a city and how uh, does a city live uh, changed uh, yeah, profoundly. And I, I guess you are more experts in that than uh, than I am here. Um, but uh, the the, um, uh, the issue that uh, Russian cities became uh, uh, moved away from uh, from centralized long-term planning um, by a central or, or yeah, a party um, structure um, to a to a more a market city and entrepreneurial approach uh, is probably key here. Also for uh, um, looking at um, yeah, looking from a perspective of uh, um, yeah, social uh, transformation and contentious and tension and community development. This is this this is, this uh, question is. Uh, I guess key how um, the the understanding what the city is and how how a city develops uh, was changing. How does this impact? Does this impact um, how people live, understand their living environment? Yeah? And um, for Russia, when you look in the literature of uh, urban studies, um, yeah, this is uh, an, a special case, uh, maybe even in the world, that uh, although you have those neoliberal processes of uh, entrepreneurial cities um, marketing themselves and developing themselves, attracting big business and trying to yeah, um, 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 uh, uh, raise revenues and so on, uh, um, that this is still has a... Um, Authoritarian uh, uh, kind of uh, yeah, character trait here. This is a still, uh, uh, to a very a big extent, uh, um, centralized and all uh, uh, yeah, managed by by a very limited uh, amount of actors. Yeah? And uh, but this is the one side. The other side is that um, uh, the living environment became uh, uh, yeah more and more significant. Uh, for uh, for Russian citizens, and that uh, yeah, the, the housing uh, sphere, the living environment around uh, their immediate flats where they are living, uh, became the grounds of of uh, a kind of a, some of my colleagues have called it the political becoming. Yeah, so that this is the sphere where uh, Russian uh, residents people become actual citizens. Yeah, in in in, in the sense that they become become politically. Uh, attached uh, to their um, to the space they are living, uh, and that they um, have a, a perception 
um, of having uh, rights uh, to defend here vis-a-vis -vis, uh, either business actors or uh, uh, political actors. Uh, so this is um, so a transformation of uh, of um, the uh, yeah, residents' approach towards uh, their living environment is here a key where we are, we are starting from. Yeah? And um, uh, and this um, yeah this this marketization of uh, the general urban environment and uh, yeah city landscape had of course uh, yeah was was. Yeah, in very in very particular spaces uh, of uh, housing estates, apartment blocks, and so on, uh, realized in, uh, by privatization, of course, of flats, and it started uh, as soon as 1991 in Moscow, and then uh, consequently in all other Russian cities and and um, yeah, everywhere in Russia. Uh, but also a marketization of of, of living space, yeah? and uh, the how the real estate market is, of course, uh, uh, very specific. Uh, uh, has seen a very specific development because of that market and commodification of, of housing space uh, in Russia. This is the one side. The other side is that uh, becoming owners, property holders, yeah, uh, Russian citizens um, um, kind of became attached yeah, to that. And uh, we, we come to that later that holding property is a very uh, specific uh, and very important and, and first uh, foundation stone uh, for um, for certain models of uh, uh, citizenship. Yeah, but, um, being a citizen and also claiming and demanding uh, to have uh, certain rights to protect that property and uh, and um, yeah, and then consequently also to demand other rights. For example, for social welfare and political uh, participation. And um, so this is very important that coming property holders uh, changed uh, the, the stance, the position of, of Russian citizens, uh, Russian residents, yeah, Russian people in uh, in society. Yeah? And uh, this, of course, is then the bridge to uh, towards uh, yeah, thoughts about civil society and uh, how civil society. So it means uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, collective action yeah, of, of, of several people together, um, um, led by their interests, their grievances, their problems, uh, but uh, acting independently from, from the state or from, uh, from, from business uh, or uh, interests. And um, this um, is then, of course, uh, yeah, just when you talk about that, and you talk about, of course, uh, the demand of uh, be, being included in the decision making, which concerns your own housing, housing environment, yeah? Their, your flat, your apartment. Uh, your apartment uh, um, as, uh, house, apartment uh, building, and uh, yeah, the, the, the playground uh, in the inner yard or the, the little uh, green park attached uh, to your district, and so on. Yeah? And um, uh, and the specific thing we want to examine then later as, as well is, and uh, many of my colleagues um, uh, from Russia have already also written about this in their in their own text that um, the the political uh, <laughs> Political attachment to uh, one's own uh, uh, public space, uh, or the, the public space you are attached to, because you you are living in it, uh, or you kind of uh, you are often acting in it, um, uh, is uh, paradoxically often uh, approached in an apolitical way. So political uh, activities, meaning uh, fighting for your rights, your interests, and so on, vis-a-vis -vis other actors, is perceived often as a non-political or an apolitical act of those uh, citizens themselves. So meaning. They they dissociate themselves from actual mainstream politics, yeah? uh, and they try to uh, yeah, mobilize and act uh, uh, without the help and support and relation to other uh, political actors. And uh, this um, <laughs> is successful more or less. And we have to always look into certain uh, uh, cases here, of course, to judge about this. But but still, generally, when you when you talk with uh, those activists, they would always dis dissociate themselves from from the from the dirty politics, from the main mainstream party politics. Yeah? So this is a very specific uh, uh, trait here. Uh, and as I mentioned before, also already, that uh, their um, this, 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 um, yeah, place-based attachment and agency um, is often based um, on, on, a, on a rights approach. So um, uh, citizens often uh, perceive or they know about their rights. They are very educated in uh, housing rights um, and uh, defend them yeah, vis-a-vis uh, uh, yeah, uh, municipalities or uh, building building companies. Sorry, so that means that 
When we talk about uh, housing space, when we talk about uh, public space around the, or the, as part of, of the immediate living environment of Russian uh, residents, then yeah, often this, this living space, this living environment becomes a protest space. Uh, and um, this is not just in Moscow, although I will base here today my uh, the examples on the Moscow case, but uh, still you can um, uh, observe this in many, many different uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, regional uh, examples yeah, that uh, this the protests of citizens often related to their own uh, living environment and living experience and uh, uh, and this um, the protest um, developing from this uh, is uh, in the most cases uh, very locally uh, anchored and uh, you can speak of grassroots uh, activism by neighbors and uh, here in the following uh, uh, I will um, then um, uh, look uh, closer at uh, two examples uh, from from Moscow but they have um, many things in common yeah? and um, one of the the main uh, uh, yeah, developments or the main reasons why those protests uh, can actually develop into uh, more than just the protest and then we everybody goes home uh, but develops into community building for example um, um, or the the change of the protest issue uh, or the protest activity towards other um, grievances and other problems in the in the district um, this is all related uh, to uh, what um, an, uh, an American colleague have co has called uh, politics of encounter. It means that the, uh, the people meeting each other, uh, and maybe they meet each other for the first time, yeah? and uh, you probably know that yourself that often um, neighbors not even know each other, yeah? um, uh, or they would, they would not greet each other, they would not even raise their eyes, so they don't uh, acknowledge each other as uh, people living in the same uh, uh, yeah, in the same um, uh, house, uh, um, even in the broader sense, or the same street. So, uh, does this this might change uh, uh, eruptively, yeah, uh, momentarily, uh, during a, a certain spontaneous protest yeah, uh, on a very local issue, and um, and this encounter people meeting each other, starting to talk to each other, starting to talk about their their, their common problems because a certain, certain common problem has uh, arisen in their in their. Uh, yeah, in a backyard because uh, some bulldozer came and uh, had uh, flattened the, the playground and they were starting to build a new building there, although nobody know, knows what is actually going on and nobody asked uh, the neighbors. Um, um, but this uh, common uh, grievance uh, yeah, can lead to a, polit a politicization of uh, this encounter between uh, neighbors yeah, uh, um, yeah, occupying the same living space um, and this uh, this encounter is related of course to their everyday life yeah? they, they are kind of just um, going about their their normal lives in their um, in their housing block in their apartment coming going to work uh, <laughs> coming um, from work uh, yeah, people, uh, children playing in the backyard and so on um, this can just change momentarily and spontaneously into uh, um, a political uh, issue, this meeting people in, in your backyard on the um, on the stair on the stairway. Yeah? So this is uh, um, what we were talking about when we when we say that uh, yeah, a citizen citizenship arises in in the housing environment uh, um, can yeah, in many cases this uh, arises, and we were trying to track this a little bit, and other colleagues uh, um, track this as well uh, in their wonderful projects. Um, um, how this uh, just normal life gets politicized yeah? um, by that uh, that encounter and meeting of, of uh, neighbors having the same problem mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but still at the same time those although they already are political in, in meeting each other talking about their problems demanding um, that certain rights are realized they have vis-a-vis uh, -vis -vis local authorities, this is of course an, um, yeah, a political uh, activity, they would say, no, we are not political, we are not associated to any party politics, we don't want to have to do anything to do with, uh, with certain politicians uh, uh, who may try to occupy this, co-opt uh, this, this protest issue. So they, um, this is what other colleagues have called a political disavowal, yeah? so that they uh, are political without being 
<laughs> political or political uh, related to mainstream politics uh, politics yeah and and um, they would do so uh, in um, by often by subverting um, uh, subverting uh, yeah legal uh, arrangements uh, uh, and and other so-called uh, scripts how to behave properly in in public space and uh, I will illustrate this in uh, in the in the upcoming example. Uh, but first, I would try. To, would like to, to introduce uh, some some yeah, more theoretical concepts uh, here into the discussion. But they uh, they help to um, to a little bit uh, yeah to to give us a language how to talk about the, those phenomena we are see, we are observing. And uh, this is the one the one uh, one thing which is important to have some instruments how to talk about those things. But uh, also we have to embed this into uh, the social historical context yeah, of of housing and and living space in uh, in the Soviet Union and in, in post and uh, yeah um, and uh, because this is still kind of uh, um, yeah, living uh, with everybody now this experience from Soviet times um, and and not even even if they have not experienced it but they they know about it from uh, from their family context or they know they remember it from their um, from their childhood and so on so um, that uh, and, and important here is that in, in, in Russia the, the the separation between um, yeah, the private space and the public space um, is uh, maybe particular, yeah. And um, um, f first is to say that um, housing uh, was a, a very important thing in the Soviet Union, and, and you, again, probably you know better than me um, that you know, housing was a central part of the social contract between the um, the, yeah, the political regime and uh, and and uh, its um, uh, its citizens. Yeah, that you had the right uh, to uh, receive housing uh, space uh, when you are. Uh, when you kind of follow the rules of being a good uh, Soviet citizen, yeah, if you work hard and and so on and so on, you, uh, you had the prospect to to gain some uh, living space. Was it you know, uh, a room or was it even an apartment? Then later in uh, in the Soviet Union. So uh, this uh, and having then that this living space, uh, although it was not property. Still, it uh, created the sense of a quasi private, a quasi private ownership. Yeah, so people were already in Soviet times very detached, uh, attached. Sorry, attached to their living space, and uh, the privatization, monetization of those living spaces. No, the sudden uh, privatization by one ruble, uh, uh, just symbolic one, um, even uh, yeah, um, made that um, relation even stronger yeah, and, and uh, formalized it. Um, so that um, this, uh, uh, also the marketization of uh, um, housing um, by you know, rising uh, and by, by, by the intrusion by into, into your housing space by management companies. Uh, you, you might, I don't know if you have heard about this, but there are so many uh, stories also by activists uh, from, from the past, from the early 90s and 2000s, but even now, how, um, how many people have conflicts with the management companies uh, managing the, uh, uh, their housing estates. Um, this is already, this is uh, intrusion, intruding into their uh, housing environment by, uh, by companies who, uh, want to make a, a profit, yeah? and um, this um, is already uh, related to that no? uh, um, um, uh, perception of uh, that there are many, many uh, dangers of <laughs> intrusion into your housing housing uh, uh, environment, and um, um, and that uh, citizens are not protected, or that at least the state does not really uh, kind of. Uh, protect them from from that intrusion also uh, from an intrusion in form of uh, new uh, housing blocks are, are being built in their districts or roads being a bit through their districts and, and their green spaces have to uh, uh, have to be cut down for this yeah or uh, the uh, new churches have to be built uh, 
uh, and taking away green space, uh, a very uh, scarce and value, <laughs> valuable green space uh, when it comes to also food in Moscow. Um, this is always perceived as an intrusion into into this um, uh, living space, which is very uh, yeah dear to, uh, to to Russian citizens. Yeah? So when you look into the literature, this is always kind of uh, described, and and activists when you talk to them always relate to that. Uh, this intrusion into their and their housing to the housing sphere by others, by people not being part of that community. Yeah? Um, and uh, coming back to the public space issue, um, um, because I'm always referring here to a space, you know, the inner yard or the, 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 the little um, green space or the park in the district, which m maybe some of you would say, yeah, but what, what has that to do with housing? Um, because housing, it might be just the, the building block and the flat inside. So why do why should we care about the, the inner yard and the playground and the, the little park around the corner? Um, this um, this is regarded as um, a so-called yeah, we and we have talked we have, have talked already about the, the, the difference between public and private space and. Um, some colleagues have uh, a couple of years ago have um, conceptualized um, uh, this this this, this uh, space of the inner yard, uh, yeah, between houses, yeah, where people live, as a so-called private public sphere, yeah, a sphere where uh, private and public um, uh, overlap, yeah, and this is still a very uh, particular and special. Uh, space, yeah, in in the life of Russian citizens, um, because here um, the party directed official public life uh, could not, um, yeah, or was was not intruding so much. Although, of course, representatives of uh, the communist uh, uh, party uh, system, you had always, of course, in in, in all housing blocks, and uh, they were present all the time. But uh, the behavior was not orchestrated uh, by by official scripts. Of how to behave properly, yeah? um, and on the other hand, uh, this public space of the inner yard was not uh, totally private. Yeah? So because yeah, you shared with others, but still here it was possible to speak more openly and behave more informally. Yeah? So uh, and so it was perceived as as more more of a part of your housing uh, uh, environment uh, as a part of um, the official public realm of of uh, the uh, yeah, uh, uh, citizen behavior yeah, as, a, as a Soviet citizen. Um, so and the intrusion into this. Uh, private public space of the inner yard of the of the public space around the uh, the uh, immediate in the yard so the, the immediate public space around the uh, uh, housing uh, space or around the living the, the apartment blocks um, the intrusion into that space is yeah also appealing uh, to uh, the 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 feelings and the, the perceptions of of Russian citizens as uh, uh, property holders. Yeah? So this is intrusion into their living and housing sphere um, as well. It's very closely related to that. Yeah? So the Russians feel a, a strong um, responsibility, a civic responsibility uh, yeah, for the spatial environment uh, around their housing, uh, not just uh, and, and recently we, we uh, um, see how uh, this um, this space can be widened very much, yeah, uh, up to uh, uh, the uh, to you know, when we look at Shias or in, in in other places where the um, um, uh, fight uh, for uh, or against uh, the pollution of the environment, which they also perceive as part of their living environment. Yeah? Um, so, but uh, what is important here you now that this this spatial environment around immediate uh, environment around the housing. Uh, space is uh, yeah, a ground for a politicized social relationship between people. You know? It's the ground where the encounter between neighbors become pol can become politicized, uh, yeah, and um, and then uh, yeah, uh, can kind of trigger a citizenship uh, um, or a development into uh, yeah, to to a certain. Um, yeah, uh, uh, to, to to become a citizen. Yeah? So this is uh, what here the the idea behind uh, behind this thought is. Yeah? Um, okay, and um, yeah, I speak all, all, all the time about citizenship and urban citizenship, but this is uh, quite a um, um, yeah rather simple um, 
uh, concept or idea behind here you know, that this is uh, citizenship has to do with a certain claiming certain rights regarding residential issues of housing and property. Yeah? So this is what we were talking about all the time already. Yeah? Um, so and um, the citizenship uh, in acts itself or uh, yeah. Uh, becomes visible in, in so-called acts of citizenship, yeah, and uh, this is then when citizens, yeah, those residents, neighbors, uh, contest yeah, and resist uh, the old scripts of or the established scripts of uh, being a good citizen, how to behave yeah, as a good citizen vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, um, for example, the the authorities, um, and and uh, these acts of citizenship, they kind of realize new forms of. Uh, behavior, yeah. For example, protesting, yeah, or for example, uh, making propositions, suggestions how to um, build uh, the the uh, the big road not through the, the the park, but maybe some somewhere else, yeah. So um, these are all like uh, uh, new models of uh, how to pe behave as a citizen vis-a-vis -vis the authorities, yeah? and. Um, uh, and those acts of citizenship, they don't have to be mass scale big uh, protests, yeah, occupying uh, the whole inner city, um, but uh, they are often uh, embedded in, in, in the everyday life of people uh, and uh, are very low scale and may, may contain very ordinary uh, activities. Uh, and you, uh, some examples I will bring uh, in the uh, in, in the following. Um, all right. I will, I will. I will skip that. I have talked about uh, the the uh, the uh, the observation that, that the Russian cities have become entrepreneurial, market-driven cities, uh, and um, but have have still have a authoritarian aspect to it when it comes to the management of those cities. That this is very still very centralized, and uh, citizens are not given or residents are not given uh, full rights to participate in, in, in decision making uh, uh, regarding their housing environment. Um, yeah, but um, but uh, this what what I now in the following uh, will exemplify uh, two uh, examples is actually part of of a much wider pro process throughout Russia. Uh, community mobilization is one of the most uh, yeah viral. Uh, uh, a form of mobilization in Russia, actually, for many years already, um, and uh, yeah, and I mean, we have we have seen uh, this on a mass scale uh, um, a couple of years ago um, yeah, during the process protests against the renovation project uh, in Moscow, uh, but we see it uh, still today, yeah, uh, every day, almost every day, almost every week, I see at least. Um, some uh, note in, in in some media about an uh, yeah, district level protest, a meeting of of citizens discussing a certain grievance, a certain problem they have, uh, and so on. And some I will now exemplify in the following. The first case I want to um, you know, show um, is uh, the case of uh, Novokosino. This is an uh, uh, yeah, an eastern uh, district at the outskirts of, of Russia is like little uh, Moscow. Sorry, a little appendix uh, here. Uh, and here we had uh, yeah business-driven construction of, of high-rising uh, building blocks, uh, like a little new uh, plant and built uh, uh, city um, at the outskirts uh, in, in the early in the early late 80s uh, planned and began to construct and finished in the early 90s um, and uh, here uh, um, citizens uh, yeah when when our residents yeah just going about their normal life looked through their windows into their inner yard where also in a, the playground was uh, situated in everything, just uh, saw how a bulldozer came along and started to set up uh, a perimeter for, for the construction site without their knowledge. Nobody knew anything. And they um, ran outside <laughs> trying to make sense of it. Uh, and all of this, uh, uh, and, and then yeah, got to know that here now uh, um, uh, a new uh, building, a new housing block should be built just in the inner, uh, in the inner yard. Um, this was the trigger for a spontaneous collective so-called lonely picketing, yeah, which lasted for uh, about 50 days in the winter of 2013, um, where up to 1,500 neighbors were involved. Yeah? So they were just one, you probably, I don't know if you know, I hope you know what the lonely picket is, uh, um, where just one, uh, yeah, uh, 
um, one human is standing uh, with maybe with a little placard to some some sign uh, voicing the protest, um, but just one uh, stands and, and they took turns, yeah, just for uh, every hour or so, how, how often ever. So they, of course, was not formalized. Uh, they were um, taking turns. Others were coming outside, bringing coffee or bringing some some uh, some uh, um, something to eat, something small. They started to uh, those who were not standing um, with, with the sign uh, were met in the at the staircase uh, uh, outside or inside, trying to talk about what is going on. Um, and so he, and they were um, yeah. Collecting a signature uh, for to petition sig uh, signatures, they, they collected 12,000 12, signatures, was quite a lot uh, for such a, a short period of time, uh, and uh, yeah, founded an informal, informal initiative group, yeah, uh, in which then under the name of Nietz Deutsche, yeah, no to the construction, uh, then um, took over some sort of coordination, yeah, of, of activities of neighbors, um, then in the following, you know, and um, and they totally kind of rejected any kind of formalization that uh, uh, initiative group, yeah, they did not uh, exist as an NGO or whatever. And they had also no real, no leader. They had uh, yeah, several people, like they were all responsible for different things. So they have a, they had a, a differentiation yeah, of, of, of work tasks uh, to do. So this is um, this, this first example, yeah, how um, yeah, spontaneously, uh, all of the politicized uh, by that uh, 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 unforeseen construction site uh, um, um, just becomes politicized. That is encounter this meeting of, of citizens uh, had a problem. What does it do? We don't want to have that new building here. We don't know what is going on at all. Nobody have to has told us we have to do something. Yeah? So and they they did. Uh, so this was uh, the, the the trigger, and this the same uh, actually happened uh, in a different form, but in principle, the very similar thing ha happened uh, in, in the second case I want to uh, touch upon here today um, in uh, Frida Vitkovo. And this is actually, although the Novokosny case is is closed already, so this um, um, there's not this group does not exist anymore. Um, the uh, the group I'm talking now here in the, the second case is still active actually yeah this is about the uh, the, const the plans to construct in um, uh, Dublur yeah a, a relief road to the Kutuzovsky Prospect in uh, in the in the west of Moscow and uh, here this commercial relief road was actually announced by the authorities within the the Moscow's 2020 master plan. Uh, but then um, the authorities actually uh, um, yeah, try to realize crucial changes to the plan without asking anybody, yeah, without asking the, the residents. And um, uh, they mobilized and spontaneously when this got... Uh, when this information got out, um, it was very well hidden. This information that they have changed, that they had changed the plan, uh, they mobilized uh, for um, for the public hearing, which was scheduled but not announced at all. So nobody uh, uh, could have come if not this mobilization uh, have uh, would have happened. And they mobilized uh, around thousand uh, uh, residents to go to the public hearing, so that the police actually had to close the uh, the doors because they. they yeah, it wouldn't let people in because it was such a mass uh, demand to attend this public hearing, um, and and this also led uh, to uh, the uh, foundation of an informal initiative group. Um, but they had uh, kind of an informal leader, someone who was very active here, and wh who was the one who uh, discovered this information about the the, the unauthorized changes, um, and um, yeah, they also then started um, yeah, a certain uh, yeah, the activities from that uh, on the basis of that in, uh, uh, yeah, informal initiative group. And in the following now, I would like to um, kind of, uh, on the basis of those two uh, cases, um, kind of uh, talk a little bit about the similarities yeah, of, to, um, of those uh, mobilizations, which uh, then kind of uh, show a certain patterns of behavior of those groups, yeah? uh, how they go about uh, um, protecting their, their housing environment. And uh, one was was very important, and I, uh, which is, has a relation to what I said before, um, that citizenship and urban citizenship is based on a rights 
um, perspective, yeah, that citizens perceive uh, certain rights and demand the implementation and realization um, from the uh, from the authorities is also here was clearly the case, yeah, that um, um, uh, the uh, the both initiative groups uh, demanded that uh, public hearings hearings which are mandatory by law in Russia and in Moscow in particular um, that uh, they that the rules for the public hearings have to be implemented have to be uh, protected and realized because in both cases the, those rules for public hearings were uh, circumvented and faked yeah uh, even or were fakely uh, implemented by the local authorities they tried to violate those and. Um, I mean, up to up to uh, uh, putting signatures for already passed away citizens, residents on the, on the list of supporters for those construction pro uh, project projects. So it was actually uh, even partly criminal behavior, and um, uh, so this is uh, and they were pro protesting that the, the, in, in, in like. Um, uh, foremost, that um, violation of of their rights, yeah? and uh, and if, as you see, can see here from the um, um, small quote from one of the interviews, um, they went to they went to uh, uh, to court to actually litigate uh, against uh, in both cases uh, litigate against the. Uh, uh, the authorities and uh, here the, in the Novo Kosten case, they they were sh they knew that they had no chance actually to uh, change the course of the construction by litigation. But they said we need to educate those people. We need to uh, show them that they, we we need to explain them how, what rights we have um, and uh, what is actually written down yeah, uh, in the law. Uh, so we we have to do this. And we do this via litigation to make it public those rules. You know? Um, and uh, yeah, so they have and they had a very strong rights-based uh, consciousness. Yeah, those uh, uh, citizens. This is already one of those aspects of being a citizen. Yeah, having a con uh, perception of your own rights and uh, motivation to defend them. Yeah, those rights vis-a-vis -vis, uh, those who have violated them, and in both cases, where the local authorities. Uh, a second and related to that first um, um, point um, is that. Although they were in both cases trying to very much to obey the laws on public behavior, so they kind of uh, they knew they were aware uh, of uh, the, the the official scripts of how to behave as a good citizen in public, but they also try, were trying to circumvent those um, legal uh, limitations of their public behavior. So although they wouldn't uh, violate uh, the the rules um, on their public uh, demonstrations, yeah, for example the the, the maximum number of participants for uh, for demonstrations when the demonstrations were were actually sanctioned, um, they would not uh, they would actually discourage uh, other people to come because they only got 500 people the maximum for the demonstration. Said okay, we already have to 500 people, please don't come, otherwise we are targeted by the authorities. Uh, but still, they try to circumvent this. This remember here in the particular case, the law on the demonstration on demonstrations. Uh, the legal limitations on demonstrations by uh, other activities. For example, um, they, of course, lonely pickets is uh, it's not a circumvention, it's just another form of a lawful uh, um, way of protesting. Uh, but for example, uh, free markets, uh, in the case of no course, you know, they used um, a free market uh, for which they, uh, a free market is a market where uh, you don't buy anything, but you interchange, yeah? you, you can, um, George, uh, you can get uh, neighbors would offer things from <laughs> from their garage, from their uh, what they have um, uh, for free, and uh, yeah, you can take something and you give something for free. So this is a free market, uh, and for the, for those kinds of uh, community activities, they would get uh, permission from the uh, municipalities um, without any restrictions. Yeah, the, the law for the of demonstra for demonstrations would not apply here, but they would use that platform platform, this public space they have been creating by that uh, free market to anyway discuss uh, your their protest issue yeah? and to announce something um, um, uh, and uh, yeah use this as a, a way of uh, yeah, coming uh, coming together um, and uh, so this was a circumvention of the law demonstration yeah? and um, and uh, another way, uh, and this way became became increasingly under uh, pressure recently. Uh, this this uh, form of uh, 
um, collectively collective meeting uh, in, in public space is the public walk of deputies. Uh, deputies have been, uh, yeah, they have the right, yeah, Duma deputies, for example, or the, the Moscow um, yeah, city parliament deputies, they have the right to meet with their constituency. And uh, so if they are, yeah, um, those people who, who, elect, who, who elected them uh, in public. And um, they would, and this is, uh, they are an interesting relation to what I said before about the political disavowal, yeah? So although um, uh, activ activists would dissociate uh, themselves from mainstream politics, but they would uh, still invite uh, someone from the, from the city parliament in Moscow to walk with them. Uh, and to explain to them their um, the agreements they have with uh, with the uh, construction site in the inner yard, um, but those public walks would then be very big, yeah. So not just five or twenty people, but but hundreds or hundred and fifty just coming together under the protective umbrella of the um, uh, deputy um, to yeah, encounter each other, to talk to each other, to meet each other, and politicize. Uh, their um, yeah their community uh, of of protesters and and establish solidarities with each other yeah vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, the municipal uh, municipalities who are still allowing the construction site in their in their backyard. Um, another issue, and this is also yeah, now relating to that. Um, yeah, politicization of, of the protest is this uh, rejection of party politics on the one hand, but still using political actors for their own, uh, yeah, for, for, for their own for their own purpose. Um, that means that often uh, activists would still ask um, deputies uh, who represent from the Moscow Parliament, uh, who city Parliament, who represent their district to. Uh, um, yeah, um, give a, a protest letter, for example, to the city uh, government, yeah, to Sobyani's office, uh, uh, or uh, they would um, yeah organize those public walks, as just said. Um, but um, they would even, and in one case, you see the the, the advertisement. Uh, this is the informal leader of the uh, protest group in Frida Witkovo, uh, they would even, uh, um, yeah, ballot for the city parliament themselves, not because they actually believe that they would, that they have a chance, but in, in order to use this, uh, uh yeah, pre-election campaign to, uh, to spread, uh, the protest issue, yeah. So this is uh, this uh, this is also a way to do this without. Uh, although he is, of course, you see it on the uh, advertisement uh, here um, that uh, Spravedliva Garcia was endorsing uh, um, you know, Oleg Kazenkov, but uh, but still he was not a party member and, and still is not, and um, yeah, still the whole protest group is dissociating itself from mainstream politics. So. Uh, so this political disavowal is very important for them. It's quite a, a normative thing. Yeah, you cannot be a part of this protest issue and uh, group initiative group uh, when you actually uh, uh, support uh, mainstream politics. Yeah? And this could even cause uh, inner conflicts in those uh, in those groups. Yeah, if some might uh, are inclined to um, to uh, yeah, support certain political actors, or they might uh, think that uh, to include them into their um, uh, yeah, productivities would uh, actually uh, benefit the whole the whole endeavor. Um, uh, this would cause severe conflicts within the the, the initiative group and even yeah, uh, cause big members to to leave. You know? um, but uh, what is maybe the the uh, very, maybe the most important aspect of those protests is that the protests are often, and in those two cases for sure, but in also in many other cases when you look at them closer, uh, that those protest um, um, activities in the beginning are just uh, a start for a longer process of community building. So this um, that the public, uh, that the the yeah the immediate environment around the, uh, their housing uh, blocks. Um, uh, becomes uh, not just political, politicized, but uh, but gets more and more so-called civic significance. Yeah, so uh, it becomes more and more important uh, to to residents beyond 
the the initial grievance why they have protesters yeah so the 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 new um, build block or the the relief road they would uh, now from that uh, they would go on to turn their attention to other issues as well for example uh, um, yeah, a lot of litter or uh, very old uh, um, I don't know uh, uh, equipment in uh, in uh, the playgrounds for example yeah or they would put new uh, put up new trees or would look also at, at different issues for example closing closing down of a, of a, of a musical school yeah for example also so this is um, uh, then already a ready kind of a, a, a machinery yeah, in order to uh, protest certain other issues yeah in the course of time so this is because people came together already knew each other uh, they have uh, certain this, this this group has a certain already status in the community others would join they have a wider network of volunteers already yeah so who can spread the information very fast so this is already a built-up infrastructure yeah so the initial in protest um, cause in uh, yeah a build up of infrastructure in the in the uh, district um, which brings the community uh, together um, yeah and this is of course a long-term effect and makes the uh, the, um, yeah, the community more sustainable and the solidarities between people living in uh, in those districts most uh, yeah, sustained so this is already uh, me coming to uh, coming to an end and summing it up a little bit yeah so this is uh, uh, those those examples here from post-soviet Moscow uh, they have shown that uh, the author the authorities and uh, in Moscow, they have a they have a, author, a legitimacy problem, yeah. And uh, you see this um, in those cases. You see it in other cases. You saw it at, uh, in the during the renovation project uh, protests. Uh, you haven't seen it uh, in the last couple of years in many other district related uh, long term protests. Uh, they were protesting the decisions of the uh, city government uh, where the um, residents actually uh, affected by those uh, new yeah, those changes uh, were not be uh, were not be included in the decision making process and this triggers uh, a rights based perception of injustice yeah uh, injustice uh, when it comes not just to your flat yeah and your housing block but what the place uh, the space around yeah um, is is affected then uh, this triggers uh, triggers the citizen becoming a citizen yeah claiming rights vis-a-vis uh, -vis the authorities uh, on the basis of your of your housing property and uh, this intrusion into the private public sphere of the environment around your housing block this politicizes no? the, the the living environment and leads to uh, long-term effects uh, in the best case scenario to community the community development yeah this is but this is also not not, not nothing entirely new and uh, confined only to the Russian space you see this for example also in in the Chinese um, uh, context uh, where colleagues have this have coined this uh, those neighborhood protests yeah um, uh, based on a rights perception and the protection of, of rights uh, as a so-called rightful uh, resistance yeah and you see this pattern here in, in the Russian case as well uh, that um, uh, that uh, law-abiding citizens uh, demand the same uh, from from the authorities yeah, to implement those rights and this, this is the uh, a kind of a foundation for active citizenship uh, in Russia today as well and uh, maybe I have provoked some of you uh, to, uh, to uh, remember certain cases they know or you have a totally different um, opinion here and totally different uh, also maybe experience and uh, I would be happy to engage in a discussion now. Thank you very much for your attention for hearing me out and I'm looking forward to your questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Kristen. So, uh, yeah, we have some uh, questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the last one is from uh, Anna Jolina. Um, I, I will read it loud just for the record. Um, thank you for the talk. The quote from, uh, from Novokosino caught my eye. We need to educate them. 
they mentioned the matter of principle as a motivation. Uh, it looks like an expression of citizenship or citizen dignity. It's not only about the rights and obeying the law, I would say, seems to indicate a, a larger identity citizenship theme. What do you think? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, mean, I would say that this uh, a perception of, of rights is here the baseline, but uh, you are you might you, know, you might be right that this uh, probably um, um, is connected to a to a broader issue. That might be this. That might be that this uh, right based perception of yourself that you have that that, that you have rights and others should or uh, kind of or those rights should be protected because uh, uh, this protects also you as a person or acknowledges you as a person is related maybe to to, to questions of dignity. Uh, I would I would not oppose that opinion. You know? Uh, the, the interesting, uh, the interesting question would be how to how to investigate this. No? Uh, this is probably then yeah, this would be an, a good um, a good question for 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 new interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, how to relate this? Yeah, to, to somehow to carve this out. How this is related to their own perception to, to, of being a person and their own personalities. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, also I wanted to say some remarks. For me, the uh, topic of citizenship, uh, of, of housing, is central for uh, the citizenship. And it's you mentioned that uh, the topic of citizenship uh, is um, it's broader than just the uh, like uh, reaction to of, or reaction of citizens to some uh, uh, events, to some um, decisions of um, like of authorities or protests. Uh, and it could be like seen in uh, like everyday actions, but uh, also uh, it's interesting that in the um, in this case you are talking more about the like reaction which uh, caused the uh, community building, for example, or something that uh, some like um, cases which triggered the 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 expression of citizenship itself. Yes. Uh, of course, you could. Uh, this I, I'm not okay. You know, yeah, this is true. It's, of course, I'm, I cannot say here that uh, those uh, protest issues are the only way how citizenship is built up. Uh, of of course, yeah. There might there might be of course other uh, issues uh, or other other things which contribute to that citizenship uh, perception. Yeah? Uh, or this, this, this uh, that people connect to each other and that they have uh, kind of collective solidarities. Yeah, here that they have a, a perception of a we. No? We here um, uh, can be reached uh, also otherwise. And uh, uh, this is then, of course, uh, yeah, an interesting question. What, what what could that be? Could it be cultural issues? Yeah, of a, uh, in, in I mean in Saint Petersburg and this. Uh, uh, other colleagues have um, uh, studied this: how the perception of St. Petersburg as as uh, a cultural heritage um, can mm. actually cause uh, this collective solidarity of people living in St. Petersburg and then protesting. For example, the when uh, the Gazprom uh, Tower, the Okta Center, was was um, planned to be in a quite in the city center, and then the whole city uh, uh, mobilized against that. Uh, here, then you have, of course, a wider issue. Then people would. Um, Base their solidarity on hey, we have to protect the cultural heritage of our city. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Although, yeah, sure. Uh, although again, it was a protest, so yeah, that's more part. It's always like a reaction to it seems to be a reaction to something. Um, also, uh, I've missed one question, uh, just uh, from uh, Ernst Mikalina. Uh, what do you think about um? How uh, grow up and build up urban citizenship in childhood in Russia? Oh, uh, I'm not sure if I have understood the, the question. I unfortunately I cannot see the question. Can I? Oh, you uh, can I, see can it. I, no, can uh, I, um, so uh, here I see it. But uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, it was from. You found it, yes? Yeah, I found it. it yeah, yeah. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, If um, I mean, uh, in, yeah, um, if, I, I guess I mean, that's not really clear. What you mean? I, I guess you mean that uh, this place-based attachment, yeah, to a certain area, of course, comes from from growing up uh, as uh, as a child in a in a certain uh, area or certain neighborhood. Then you're already kind of attached to a certain area from the 
from your childhood and then you are also kind of ready to protect it yeah, against intrusions. Um, this is an, um, this would be, yeah, you all, you all are kind of contributing to a uh, more uh, further development of this research. Um, of course, that was, would be an interesting question to ask uh, and to see, uh, look at uh, this we did not do actually. We, we did not explicitly ask uh, people we are talking to in this project um, how long have they lived in the in the in this uh, neighborhood? Yeah, if they have been living in the neighborhood or since their childhood, and that's maybe because that's maybe why they are so active. Uh, we haven't checked that, um, but um, this is an interesting uh, interesting thought. If this would attach yourself or would trigger this. Um, politicization more or easier if you are have, uh, if you if you brought up in, in this child in this in this uh, environment uh, in any case I would say uh, childhood uh, yeah attachment to a, is, is probably relevant absolutely you know? but it depends on if you have yeah, yeah absolutely mm -hmm. interesting how to yeah. this was an interesting question we have to check that what activists are actually children of, of their of their of their neighborhood mm -hmm. we can't hear uh, uh, they can't hear they can't hear me oh it was an uh, earlier quote okay uh, earlier question because they have added they can't hear me okay. uh, so the next one uh, is from Daniel R um, thank you for talk can you speak to how uh, the built environment of the housing blocks facilitate organizing, protesting, or make it more difficult? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, um, I, I think, and maybe others could correct me here, uh, that the, the, the just the, the, um, the, the, the material environment, I think it's not, there's no relation to uh, the, the, the probability of protest. Um, but I'm, I might be mistaken, but I have the feeling that uh, this uh, protest can be in, ev in every uh, envi built environment, in every district, uh, how, however this is built. Um, I think imp important is here the, uh, the relation between uh, the local authority, the municipalities, and the whole uh, decision-making process uh, about changes in this particular environment uh, with, with, with the residents. So if there is an open relationship and the public hearings are actually open and the authorities are uh, have not yet decided, but actually have might, to have an open decision-making process, um, uh, this uh, is then beneficial probably to not having a, pr a protest, but an interaction, a productive interaction between uh, with the citizens. If this is totally closed. Does the does does uh, that access to the institutional institutional decision making process, then uh, protests can arise, I guess, in in any given in any given district. And um, and I, yeah, in Moscow you see this actually everywhere. I don't know if there is a relation between uh, social class, income, and uh, welfare of of residents uh, or the the the, the 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 real estate prices of apartment blocks. Uh, with protest occurrence. I don't know if this has been studied already, but I would say there is not no such correlation, but I'm also a bit mistaken. So yeah, it's a, like a, a common thought, I would say, in the uh, sphere of uh, architects and uh, planners, sometimes that uh, sometimes uh, some things could be explained by the building environment. But uh, yeah, so uh, you have to observe any uh, correlations with the, uh, you said that uh, no correlations with the welfare or uh, Something like what is uh, like that is observed in your cases, yeah. So it's now, for example, the the Novokosino case is is a quite an uh, is a, this is uh, there's a high criminality rate. Uh, real estate prices are, are rather uh, are lower than the average in Moscow. Um, many young families uh, and so um, and uh, you have the protest and then you have uh, Filida Vodka war with the with the um, Dublior uh, of the Kutuzovsky prospect. This is a mm. high price uh, uh, in environment with very um, a, lot, a lot of very educated uh, um, people with high salaries living there. Um, and you have also the project, uh, the, pro the protest and mobilization. So this is obviously here, yeah, in those already taking those two cases, uh, very different environments and still the protest occurrence. Um, 
Yeah, thank you. So in uh, the last uh, questions for now is uh, like more than common uh, from Farvar Kabisha. Um, I'm observing an ongoing protest against the new partly illegal development project on a park territory. Oh, sorry, I lost. Uh, one of the protesters chat participants wrote that she could never ever imagine that something like this illegal construction is possible in Russia. He was curious to see how the local protest is educating the citizens and stimulating them to embrace the uh, reality they used to be somehow detached from. Exactly. This is a good example for, that, for what I mean and what uh, uh, others meant with this um, politics of account, encounter, no? that the, the meeting of people during the protest uh, enlightens their, their knowledge about their social reality. And this might be that people think, oh, aha, I didn't know that. And then this is, might be it. Yeah? Or they say, hey, I didn't know that. I, I'm angry about this. Let's do something. Or can I help somehow? Yeah? At least with giving leaflets somewhere or uh, something else. But this is an activation. Yeah? Uh, and this is uh, the citizenship becoming what is, uh, what is meant here. No? Uh, by those very mundane, ordinary processes yeah? of just talking to each other yeah? uh, during that uh, uh, protest um, issue. Yeah? Good, good, good uh, example here. Yeah. Uh, and the last one, do you think it's right that people are going to protest only very big problems, not small ones, uh, but important uh, ones moment, not for a moment? Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, 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 mm. wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there is any uh, good or bad protest or any um, senseful or senseless pro protest. Uh, protest has always a, a very good reason, I would say. Um, and and the big problems are as well uh, uh, are so important as the small ones. And the big problems, such as I don't know, corruption on a on a society scale or whatever, uh, or the the way the whole country is governed, uh, as we now see in Khabarovsk, uh, are as, uh, are also very important. And people have good reasons to go onto the streets. And uh, but but uh, grievances on the very local level when it comes to. Uh, uh, we are illegal constructions or constructions not not sanctions by residents or uh, by church constructions in the local neighborhood park or whatever. Um, they are also uh, or we've seen in Yekaterinburg last year one of the plans for the new church on a, on a, on the local uh, public square. Um, also, very good reasons, no? local local problems, but very good reasons to to protest uh, and concerns there. Their, their own social reality way of life and um, so this is uh, I think all protests might be might be right because they are right from their own perspective yeah, yeah the question was about the uh, big and uh, the relation of big and small uh, problems so yeah it, it should be maybe uh, like um, defined more uh, more precisely, what is big problem? What is small for for the protesters? It's uh, of course it's uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not strange. <laughs> question, but, no, it wasn't uh, strange. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, protest always occurs there where there's no other way to express and uh, the grievance and to uh, to s start to solve the problem. No? This is when when there's some kind of a in, in, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, a closed way, yeah, when when they occur, when when a barrier is occurring, yeah, when people cannot speak to their authorities, when they cannot speak to those who govern them, them, uh, then protest occurs. Yeah? So this is because this is uh, true for the big issues uh, of social of life and the smaller ones, right? This is similar. Yes, sir. Uh, I think. Uh... I think we have no more questions. Uh, I'm just checking uh, whether I'm, I've missed something. Uh, no, I think that's it. So uh, we, will ju we will wait just for the uh, two mi minutes. You can uh, ask uh, the questions or put some comments if you uh, have some. Uh, and just to conclude, I want to say that we are waiting you for the next uh, lectures too. It will be next Wednesday um, at the same time. Uh, we will uh, talk about the housing estates in Prague after the transformation. Uh, we're talking about the um, 
the perspective different perspectives from from, from the uh, from the market view from the view of the uh, politics uh, etc so yeah please join us uh, next time uh so yeah i think uh, yeah i think that's it we have uh, no more questions and thank you uh christian thank you very much for uh, uh for your lecture um thank you all the uh viewers for your attention yeah, so I think it it was great. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was great. fun. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening, everybody. <laughs> yeah, have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.